I see. Dan has got three fucking pillows, man. I didn't like camping going into this thing, and I don't like camping coming out of it. The UFC on your hometown? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm UFC President Dana White, and we're always looking for up and coming talent to sign. Back in the day, I used to scout the world looking for new talent, but I haven't done that in years. Now, I'm back on the road, I'm looking for fighters, and I'm bringing two of my favorite people with me. Matt Serra won the Ultimate Fighter, and he also became the welterweight champion of the world. He now trains some of the best fighters in the sport out of his gym in Long Island, New York. Dean Thomas is a former UFC fighter and was on the Ultimate Fighter Season 4 with Matt Serra. He's beat some of the best guys in the sport. Serra, Guida, Pulver. He's with the American Top Team, and he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he's a lot of fun to hang out with. We're checking out the best restaurants, the coolest places to hang out, having fun, and then going to see some fights. I'm looking for the next Ronda Rousey, the next Robbie Lawler, the next Conor McGregor. I'm looking for future champions. And I'm willing to go to any show, anywhere in the world to find them. On this episode, we're heading to Los Angeles. We're going to do some stand-up comedy at the Laugh Factory in front of a sold-out crowd. I'm going to one of my favorite spots, Randy's Donuts. We're visiting the set of the TV show Kingdom, and we're checking out another stacked RFA card. Time to make the donuts! So we're going to Randy's Donuts. I am a huge fan. This place is legendary. It's been in L.A. since the 50s. Their jelly donuts are the best I've ever had. This place has a line outside. 24 hours a day. So when we get in there, the owner introduces me to the master donut maker. Apparently, he came from Mexico, and his father's friend taught him how to make donuts when he was a little boy. And he's been making donuts now for however many years. So we get in there, he's got all the dough rolled out, and you take this little cutter, and you start cutting the dough. So that's what they had me do first. I'm doing four to match one. Then we move over and you take the donuts and you put them in this hot box and you let the dough sit in the hot box for a while. Then you take it out and you literally drop these into the oil and pull the screen down over the top and, and let them cook. Then you take the two sticks, you have to flip them over and then they come out of the grease and you glaze the donuts. You know, if the fight game doesn't work out, I'm coming. You're coming. Then from the glaze, you pick them up, you stick two in, and it literally fills them up with the jelly. These fucking donuts are so hot that they were literally taking layers of my fucking skin off, it felt like. I always wondered how the fuck they got the jelly right? inside the donut. Ow! Come on, Dana! <laughs> oh, it's hot! It's fucking hot! Dane is, again, complaining about blisters with the fucking thing, his room temperature. Ah, these are fucking hotter than other ones. Fucking, oh, oh man, I'm losing skin. The fuck's he talking about? Uh, They've been out for 20 minutes. They've been out for fucking 20 minutes. I don't know how the fuck these guys do this. They're getting cool at this point. Uh, yeah. Come on. Barely have pussy hands. I can't fucking chop wood. I can't handle things that are too hot. Oh, <laughs> He did tell me to it. He fucking got a fucking strawberry load all over his fucking hand. And he said, hey, man, I'm getting burnt. You guys want to sell something up front? I do. <laughs> yeah, get on up there. I do. What's up, boss? Welcome to Randy's. How can I help you? One glazed donut, one chocolate sprinkle, two sprinkles, one chocolate, and one vanilla ice. Welcome to Randy's. What's the best one you got? The best one? All of them are the best ones we got. Let's go, let's go, people. The line is wrapped around the building. We gotta get this thing moving. Dean Thomas was working the counter, looking for, it looks like he was looking for a fucking job there. Listen, in this day and age, you don't know when you're gonna be out of work, so you need as many skills as you can possibly get. So if things go wrong, I might have to put an application at Randy's Donuts. It's the week of UFC 199. I had to go to ESPN and do Sports Nation. Matt and the crew are waiting for me outside to come out of this interview so we can go on 
to what we're going to do next. I wasn't there, but some guy looks at Matt Sarah and says, what the fuck are you looking at? Just walk, just keep walking, buddy. There's a safer fight on the next block, I'll tell you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Keep walking. <laughs> he had on a little Allen Iverson sleeve on his arm. And, but he was in shape, though. It was like for an old homeless, like crackhead dude, this guy was in kind of good shape. Do you see what happens? Do I have a face that people just want to smack? I don't know what it is, man. People like to fuck with me, man. People think I, I don't look for trouble. Fuck, man. I'm, 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 a, I'm a husband and a father. Don't do this. It's too early for this. Are you serious? A good friend of mine, Travis Barker, who is a vegan, has a vegan restaurant in L.A. called Crossroads. And Travis called me and said, hey, I want to put a challenge out to you and Matt Sarah. You guys are always talking shit about the vegans. I want you to come check out my vegan restaurant. So Matt and I accepted the challenge. We want to show you the vegan food isn't for, you know, can I swear, <laughs> isn't for pussies. <laughs> and so I thought we'd w walk you through um, making fresh pasta. So we're just going to take this through the machine a couple times. You want to try it? Yep. Where's it go? Right here? Yeah, right there. Beautiful. I didn't know I had pasta at the vegan restaurant. Look how excited yeah. I get. <laughs> You're just excited to eat. <laughs> so cool. We'll go pick this up on saute with the bolognese sauce. Have you guys taste it? We got salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. We'll drop our uh, fettuccine, the Dana made. So once those are translucent, we'll hit it with some white wine. Now what are those chunks? Carrots. You know, the carrots, now this is going to... Kind of tastes like bolognese sauce. I guess we'll know. No, no, no. There's a, there's, yeah, there's a. I'm like, a, usually it's already vegan, meat. I'm there's a vegan that. sausage that we grind up in there. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. And then we're gonna hit it with a bit of cream, and the cream is made from raw cashew nuts. Oh, wow. Another protein source. I'm a big cashew guy. Yeah. Hit it with a little bit wow. of uh, coconut parmesan, and uh, maybe get a couple forks. Let Vinny get the first test here. Yeah, because you you're the expert here. With that's this. right. It's gonna be hot. Oh, wow. Is it hot? Oh, wow. It's really hot as hell, but... <laughs> That's hot as hell, but... I'm blown away. Yeah? I am blown away. I am You're blown not, away. not blowing smoke up my ass. Dude, I would not do that. And I'm telling you, my father-in-law cereal is right off the boat from Italy at 21. They make the homemade sauce. Yeah. Homemade pasta. This is amazing. They made a bolognese sauce. I saw carrots in it. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm going to throw this on the floor. Me and Dean were sharing a plate. We didn't even split it up. We're fucking like Lady and the Tramp in that fucking thing. That food was so good that I wish they had a restaurant like that in, in New York, me and me. Oh, man, I'm, I'm stuffed. I got meatballs coming out my eyes. <laughs> what, what did you guys have to eat? We ate everything, man. Food was fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad you guys came for brunch. And the place is beautiful. And I'm so glad you hit me up about this because in a million years, we would have never gone to a vegan place, right? I was dreading it. <laughs> yeah, I was dreading Even it. this morning. I can't see what you guys are eating on all the episodes. Yeah. I, I, uh, Not I, the healthiest spot. I brought protein bars in my pocket, man, because I didn't think I was going to eat anything here. And then I saw him putting carrots in the thing for the bolognese sauce. Like, oh, kill me. And then I tried it. Couldn't, I couldn't believe it, man. Thanks for the hospitality. And, dude, you killed it, man. That You were right. This place is fantastic. Listen, I love you. You're the fucking best, man. I appreciate you very much. Anytime, man. Have a great night, you guys. You too. Be safe. Yeah, man. All Good right. Job, bro. Later. So after we ate, we sat down and started going through the fight card. There's a lot of guys I'm interested in. And, again, another RFA card looks like it's going to be a great event. We have uh, Mario Israel, 10-1, and one, against Albert Morales, 5-0. and oh. He's 32 years old. And this kid, Morales, is 24 years old. He's 5-0. 5-0? Oh. Oh. Yeah. The other guy's got twice as many fights. I like, I like 24 years old better than 32 years old. Tiago Moises? Is it Moises? That's your boy, Moises. Moises. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, boy? yeah, yeah. That's Dean's yeah. guy. Yeah. One of our, yeah, one of our top prospects in the gym. Yeah? Dean Thomas has a guy who's fighting in the main event. His name's Tiago. He's 21 years old, and he's 7-1. and one. That's going to be fun, too, to see how Dean's guy does. I've always wanted to go to Compton, California. So I called the game. The game actually had a game that day. There's a basketball tournament there called the Drew League. 
he said, come on over to my game today. I'm playing. It's a cool thing for charity. So we went to Compton to check it out. Nate Diaz. Nate has always said he wanted to come on looking for a fight. So I called Nate up and asked him if he wanted to meet us over in Compton. Thanks for inviting us down here. I was telling him it's fucked up because, you know what I'm saying, you came out to my song, El Chapo, oh, yeah. and you whooped his ass. I was trying to fuck up. <laughs> I was thinking that when he was walking out that night, he put the El Chapo out too. Right. <laughs> You're supposed to come out to the El Chapo. I know, I know. We're going to get it in, and then we're going to... All right, man, do your thing. Whoop some ass. Good luck. It doesn't get any more cliche in the fight game than meeting Nate Diaz in Compton. That's one that beat up McGregor, eh? That's right, that's the one. Come that's here, Nate man. Diaz. Well, I'm <laughs> glad to see somebody beat that, that Irish guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't mean no disrespect. He beat him down good, though, didn't he? Beat him. I love him. <laughs> man, y'all uptight out of sight, man. <laughs> No, really, really, my pleasure, man. Nice, nice meeting y'all, man. Really. Welcome to Watts. Thank you, sir. Watts, California. I love busting on Matt about his weight because it's kind of the one thing that I know he's sensitive about. He's Matt can't pass up community. no food. Thank you. Right, you. Listen, I, I'm I, I, I give back to the community. That ain't why you eat, Matt. Calm yourself down. He don't like when people talk about his weight. So that's like an open invitation to talk about his weight. Some people are trying to look good with their shirt off. I'm just trying to look good with the shirt on. <laughs> You better get used to it because I'm going to talk about your weight. All right? Yeah. I'm just saying. You always get upset. People calling you, you know, a little I'm bigger than... Jump on you I'm right not, now. I'm just, no, I'm not. Just, I'm just saying. You just, Don't you know. make it awkward. Yeah, Dean, Dean can definitely break some balls, but that's okay. That's all right, because I can go back at him. Every time somebody offers you food, you don't have I'm to gonna, get it. You're going to have a face full of... You don't have to get the food every time somebody offers it to you. Shut your mouth, Dean Thomas. We like to break each other's balls, but... Uh, but Dean's a good dude. We got the chance to hang out with Nate Diaz at the basketball game in Compton. We had a lot of fun. Nate Diaz is a really fun, cool kid. I like the kid. Hey, you see uh, Steve Sutcliffe said, I got blocked by Sarah for calling him fat. <laughs> Who's that guy? I don't know, somebody you blocked. Eh, fuck him then. It's not nice. Matt don't like, Matt don't like being called fat. No, no, listen. It's one thing. No, how about this? No, no. It's one thing like this. Look, it hurts, listen, it hurts first of all, feelings. first of all, how's your blisters doing from the donuts? <laughs> by the way, how's your? Not good. I know you just not recovered good. from Sioux Falls for a fucking with your pickaxe and a fucking log, and you had a bump. You you suffered through that blister, and now you got your second blister in 20 years. So there's a show called Kingdom on DirecTV, the audience channel. I pretty much hated every fight movie about MMA ever done. I went into this thing ready to hate it. Then I ended up binging all night and watched the entire season. If you haven't seen it and you're an MMA fan, check this thing out and you will become addicted to this show. We're a fucking family and nobody can fucking change that. You're my boys. I love you. Now go fucking kill this face. There's a great saying, it's like, don't worry about what the groundlings think, it's what the one judicious guy in the back. <laughs> that, you guys do that. It is. It's really like, we, 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 we do this show so that if you guys watch it, it's like, we're not going to fucking embarrass anybody. Right. You know, we got to no. do okay. justice. So I was like, this is about as real as it could get. Oh, yeah. And especially from a coaching perspective, right. when you're coaching them guys, like, because I'm a coach too. Right. So I'm like, that's about as real as you can get. Relax. Relax. No, back. Get back. Get your weight back. Back. You know, when we met the cast of Kingdom, everybody was super cool, and our opinions, especially Dana's, it really mattered to them. I had DVD flown in from, uh, wow. yeah, so these guys could start watching. Look at these guys are on there. He's like, oh shit, man, he beat up the Diaz brothers in the <laughs> <laughs> So these guys are all firing no shit, man. I go, yeah. holy it's shit. Like, oh. Look at him, my God. Look at this guy. This guy's all, he's nuts. He's going to get a hooker. I'm like, oh shit, it's his mom. I go, it's his mom. I'm pumped for you, man. My it's good shit. Gonna call you. My mother's gonna send you tomato sauce. I mean, you're gonna be getting shit from my family for the rest of your life. <laughs> to have him so excited about the show and to get how much work we put into it to make it authentic, since we've started shooting, this is the best day of my life. So I ended up inviting him to the fights with us that night, too. I ended up hanging out with these guys all weekend, and we had a blast. We always like to do things that are out of our comfort zone, and L.A. is no different. L.A. is really well known for its comedy. So we're going to go in to the famous Laugh Factory and do stand-up comedy. 
So the way that this thing works is we go back to our hotel room and we have an hour to write our material, memorize it, and then come deliver. Oh my God, I forgot my line. <laughs> we get Nick Swarsden to come in and give us the do's and don'ts of stand-up comedy, basically the 101. You said you're a little freaked out, right? There's a big difference between making your buddies laugh and doing some stand-up comedy. What you do this, Matt, so you have a napkin and you just write Rocky. And then you see that and you go, oh, and that'll spark you, yeah. you know, and you it, just tell it then it comes out more it comes out organic. Yeah, fuck Yeah, it. you don't want anything word for That's word. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm picking up what you exactly. put down. You're picking up well, fast. I, am. I really am. Scary fast. Thank you, bro. Do you, do you have a good opening line? Do you, do you know what you want to walk out <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> wow. Not yeah. yet? No, we got to write this shit after you teach us what to do. Oh, fucking hell. You yeah. Have, but yeah, you have an idea of what you want to do, right? I'm fucked. Worst thing again, you bomb her shit again. Yeah, that's it, but that's in your control. <laughs> Have fun, you guys are gonna be great. All Thank right? you, appreciate Thank it. Thank you, I appreciate that, man. Anytime. So, Nick Swarson gave us great advice, but I might have cheated a little bit. <laughs> Tony Hincliffe who is one of the best joke writers in Hollywood right now. He does stuff on the roast for Comedy Central, and he's Joe Rogan's right hand man. They travel all over the world and do comedy together. He wrote my set for me. <laughs> Making fun of yourself is one of the most important things in all of stand-up. Everybody does it, even if they don't seem like they're doing it. I've been with the same woman for 20 years. Early stoppage is what happened to my sex life. <laughs> Me and my buddy Rich, we wrote these just for you. These are custom made. He has a pretty good understanding of the game. He's a good speaker, smart guy. He hired the best joke writer in the world. So, you know, you combine all those things. I don't I don't see how it can go. I don't, I don't see how it could go that bad. Leading up to this thing, you know, obviously, I mean, anybody, unless you're a fucking lunatic, to go up on stage and do stand-up comedy is, is, is horrifying. And I'm thinking, you know, a, a few people are going to be there, whatever. We sold the fucking place out. I've been friends with David Spade for a long time. And he flew in, you know, to do this spot for me. And I appreciate him showing up. Oh, shit, man. What's up, brother? Matt Sarah. Nice hey, to man, meet nice you, man. Hey, man. Nice to see you, pal. Huge fucking fan, Thank man. Thank you, pal. I'm not going to suck your dick, though, because I know you get that a lot. Hey, not that you men's rooms right there. <laughs> <laughs> fucking come on, Dana's gonna go. Dana, dude, Dana's shitting himself. He literally, he's fucking shitting him. He needs you. Hey, listen, help is here. Totally. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Totally. It's great to see you. Good to see you. Um, Thanks for coming. I heard you're more nervous. Yeah, you heard right. Who's going on? How many guys are going on? Us three. The three douches. Oh, just you three? Shit, okay. This is bad, bro. The Mount Rushmore of comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking exactly. Ah, uh, uh, I'm excited to watch you guys bomb because it might make me look better. <laughs> it is nerve wracking. It's like pacing like a panther waiting to go on. Yeah. No, it, reminds, it reminds me of fighting. It really does. Like well, that same feeling. thing. You're waiting and waiting. Yeah, and waiting. you're waiting and you hear the other guy, you hear the other fight. Just want to get it over with. Yeah. Just get the fuck in there. Yeah. I'm going right before him after all the other guys and the comedians and then Spade is following me. So I, I, I have to at least be decent. I'm so motherfucking nervous. Really? Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Just, is it good to be drinking a lot and no. getting fucked up? No, no, it's just, right. just yeah. one thing. Maybe it's a bad idea? Yeah. yeah right. Maybe one thing to take the nerve so off. So I should slow yeah. down a little bit? Yeah. But you've been doing uh, improv stuff. So. Yeah, so um, it, it helps. He's been doing improv? You, yeah. you motherfucker. You didn't tell us that. No, no he did not tell us that. In, in, uh, <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You dirty motherfucker. I meant three troops. What we found out before we went on stage is this fucking guy had done some improv before and he started telling us that's not the same bullshit, it's not the same. You dirty no, rock no. motherfucker! I've never done stand-up before. This is the first time I've ever done this. Oh, how about that? Hey, how about that? Hey, then I found out the guy's been doing fucking improv for the last four years, that fucking sandbagger. Uh, this next comedian uh, is a former UFC superstar. He also has a podcast called Morning Wood. Please give it up for Din Thomas. Let him know. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> so this is my first time doing this shit. Yeah. I've never done this. I've never done it. Yes, you guys are popping my cherry. I'm about to lose my virginity. Remember the first time you lost your virginity? I do. 
I gave this chick 30 seconds of straight fire. <laughs> when that 30 seconds was up, <laughs> and the fucked up part about it is we was just kissing. <laughs> it's a true story. But what's really fucked up is when she said she was pregnant. How the fuck you get pregnant? So like a good man, I'm a good man. Proud, strong brother. It's like I'm fucking around. I denied that shit. I was like, that shit ain't mine. That's pretty good. Now, when I wrote that joke, I wasn't 100% sure how that shit was going to go down. I didn't know if you guys were going to like that. But I tell you what. This is my first time doing this shit, and I wasn't going to let y'all fucking fuck up my ego, so... <laughs> Thank you very much, y'all. I'm Dean Thomas. Yeah. Wow. Holy really shit! Good. Really good. Nice job, man. Thank you, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Dean Thomas. <laughs> you dirty motherfucker. <laughs> It, it felt like you're backstage at a fight, you know? Well, shit, man, I want this. I just want to go on already. And I feel like I'm about to fight, man. Who knows, I might. Next comedian uh, slash uh, fighter was the former UFC champion. This dude pulled off the biggest upset in history, Matt Serra. He doesn't wait for his intro. What's up, motherfuckers? Get right to it. Shit, man. Holy fuck. The first thing, let me tell you something. I love this fucking layout. Because any hecklers, I'll get to you motherfuckers in five seconds. <laughs> fucking five seconds. And that goes for you cocksuckers in the rafters. I'll be like a fucking five foot six Spider Man. I'll fucking climb up there and bite your fucking neck. <laughs> but like I said, no, listen, I'm not a comic. Uh, obviously, but uh, <laughs> I'm a former UFC fighter, you know? Oh, thank you. Thank you. And as a fighter, people ask me about fighting movies, and they're like, is it realistic? Like, Rocky, is Rocky realistic? The most realistic thing about Rocky, believe it or not, has nothing to do with fighting. It has to do with relationships. That fucking cunt Adrian. <laughs> no, no, listen. Hold on. <laughs> hear me out. Wait, wait, wait. Hear me out. Don't attack me right away. <laughs> Rocky, Rocky won. Rock the first Rocky. She's in the fucking pet store with the, do you want some turtles? And you know, she has the glasses, the, the little point on them. You know she's fucking hot if they take them off, but she's quiet. And you know, halfway through the movie, Rocky's taking a fucking ice skating, and next thing you know, she's a fucking nympho and he's fighting her off. Beautiful. That's the first Rocky. Rocky Four, you can't win! Fucking bitch! Holy shit, man. All I know by Rocky Six, I was so happy that fucking bitch was dead. I mean... <laughs> Dana White's gonna be coming out here soon, okay? If anybody fucking for one second tries to heckle him, he'll fucking Ariel Hawani you out of this fucking building. <laughs> hey, people, this is all I fucking got. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I made up all that shit myself, man. Thank you. I feel like I just won my first fight, bro. I feel like I just won my first fight. <laughs> Thanks, man. You were so poised. Holy fuck. I didn't listen to any of the real comedians because I didn't want to hear it because I was focusing on what I had to do. It's just under pressure now remembering that shit, you know what I mean? <clears throat> when I have 280 fucking people staring at me. I'm starting to think that I was actually more nervous than when I went to ride the fucking bull. You can ride a bull, you can do stand up at the laugh factory. Right. That's way scarier than just getting up and being funny. When I was walking out to go downstairs to go on stage, our cameras were like in my face. I almost fucking slapped one of the cameras out of the way. Leave me alone. My fucking arms were sweating. Arms don't fucking sweat. My arms were sweating. I was so motherfucking nervous walking up on that stage. Give it up for Dana White. Let him know, Dana White. Uh, 
I just want to start this off by saying everybody who laughs gets tickets to UFC 200. walk up to me and they're like, you have the dream job. You have the greatest job in the world. I love your job. Do you people realize that I deal with more crying naked men than the human resources guy at Chippendales? <laughs> Speaking of fighting, I've been married to the same woman for 20 years. <laughs> Early stoppage is my sex life. I know a little bit about boring fights. My sex life is like a fight between two wrestlers. I jump in there, I grind a lot until everybody loses interest. Did you guys hear that Brock Lesnar is back? I appreciate the fact that you came out here tonight for looking for a fight that I'm going to tell you who his opponent is yeah. right here tonight. Yeah. He's going to be fighting Matt Serra. Yeah. Matt's going to lose 30 pounds to get into the heavyweight division. Yeah. Obama's on his way out. Yeah. This is a little weird, but I've been studying presidents over the last hundred years, every one of them come in powerful, vibrant, with their own hair color, <laughs> right? Every one of them go out looking like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so my question is this. If Bernie Sanders goes in looking like Bernie Sanders, what the fuck is he gonna look like when he comes out? My gut says Hillary. <laughs> now, I know a lot of you young fucking weirdos like Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I don't get it. You realize he's going to fucking die, right? No, I'm serious. This guy's going to fucking die. If he gets into the White House, it's literally going to be a weekend at Bernie's. I'm Dana White. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Mission accomplished, man. That's a fucking one and done for me, man. I would never do that again. You People don't realize, walking up on stage, packed, sold out house, and you got to make people fucking laugh? Holy shit. That's one of the hardest things I've ever done. By far, one of the hardest things I've ever done. And I fucking cheated. Imagine if I didn't cheat, I probably would have dropped fucking dead of a heart attack. I love the fact that we have Dean Thomas at the fights. This guy is a true veteran of the game. He's seen it all. He's done it all. Like Matt Serra, has a good eye on up-and-coming talent, knows who's out there. He has a ton of critical input that I value and that I can take. And, and I got two solid experts who can, who can really help me scout talent. This is a, a perfect type of thing for me. I think I was put on this earth to do stuff like this. I'm here, and I'm, I'm going to give it the best I got. So Dean Thomas's kid is great. He was fighting a kid, Jamal, who was a 145 pounder, took the fight on short notice and moved up to 155 to take this fight. Let's go, Tiago, you gotta get up first. That's, you gotta get working, Tiago, you gotta get working. Target get that chin. Oh. Nice, nice. Oh, he gotta stay on him now, look at this. Oh. Dude. I'm telling you, if he wins this fight, I'll fucking bring him in. Tiago, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Do it again, do it again, do it again! Stay on him, stay on him, stay on him, stay on him! Push forward, push forward! Keep coming, keep, don't back up.
So Dean Thomas's kid is great. He, he's a good fighter, man. And as the fight started to progress, if Tiago would have finished him early, I probably would have been interested in Tiago. But I actually started to look at the guy Jamal and was very impressed with, with him moving up last minute, short notice in a fight like that. Jamal's a tough, athletic fucking dude. Come on, Jamal, do something. Now I'm rooting for Jamal. Sorry. <laughs> this kid Tiago is very green. And I actually think that kid Jamal was a really good fight for him. Pressed him hard and really tested him and, and pushed him. He should be finishing this fight. Body, body, body! Oh, he's on! He's on yeah. 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 It was a good fight for him. Tiago needs to stay on track and keep fighting. Uh, but I was actually really impressed with the kid Jamal who took the fight on short notice. I'm going to keep my eye on that kid. So there's a fight that I'm interested in, Morales versus Israel. And Israel is a very well-respected guy. He's a tough guy. Great record, 10-1. and one. Morales goes in 5-0 and oh, and knocks him out in the first round. We're always looking for guys that are 135 and 125 pounds. So 5-0, and oh, impressive win over a 10-1 and one guy with a great reputation. I'm in. I'm going to give him a shot. So we assessed the whole show. I brought Sean. And you know Sean Shelby, one of our matchmakers. We're going to do it, kid. We're going to fucking do it, man. We're really? Yeah. Oh, you like that? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Oh! Nice. Nice. Good job, buddy. Good job. You know, it, it's really nice when you see a talented fighter and then they get that nod from Dana and then they get that contract. They know they're signed and uh, it, it's really a beautiful thing. You know, he was, that kid was, was he was uh, over the moon. He was so happy when Dana said that he's going to bring him in. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're having fun on this show, but that's what this is all about. Hey, never said the hey, bullshit that you're too big to come back. Hey, never, never, never. I got it. I'm so happy. I, I, I can't even explain it, man. I'll, I just had a baby, so I have two babies. Now I have an opportunity to, put, to make this a career now. And I'm so thankful. I'm, I'm grateful. So L.A. was crazy, awesome, fun. Everybody who laughs gets tickets to UFC 200. I'm a one and done with stand-up comedy. I'll never do that again. And I found a great prospect. So all in all, an amazing weekend.